Hi. Oh, hi. 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 Welcome back. Hi. <clears throat> As I was saying, hi, I'm Mark. I used to be a senior artist at Blizzard Entertainment, and now I teach art for a living, among other things. In this episode of my ongoing weekly series that I call YouTube Art School, I'll let you know how to study the right way. How to study so that you level up fast. What are the exact steps to study as a complete beginner, as a more advanced artist, and as an artist with a lot of experience who might feel like you've been plateauing a little bit. Three different levels of study based on where you're at in your art journey. As you improve as an artist, your approach has to adjust, has to adapt with your level. If you don't want to be crying in the corner as everybody gets ahead of you and become more successful artists, I don't want you to cry. So I got you covered, of course. <gasps> Quickly, let's get this class started. Pay attention, classes in session. Today, we're going to learn how to study the right way to avoid wasting time and make progress as quickly as possible. How to study is a question that you guys keep asking about in the comments of my videos. And so as an art teacher, I just can't help myself but try and answer it for free right here on YouTube. <laughs> just kidding. You really thought I would reveal such important information for free? Come on, bro. I spent my entire career, years of experience, fine tuning this stuff will only continue once you've paid the fee of one like or one sub. Okay, fine. I guess I have no choice now. A lot of what we'll talk about today is exactly the stuff that I think about when I give feedback to my students. One size doesn't fit all. It might or might not be obvious, but I always adjust the type of feedback that I give to my students depending on their level. There are some things that you can point out to a more experienced artist and they'll get it. Whereas a less experienced artist might not. You can almost think of a less experienced artist as a like a horse with the blinders on. You just can't see or notice as much at first. As you gain more experience though, the blinders open up. You're able to take in more information at once and the more information that you're able to take in, the faster you're able to improve. Given that you adjust how you approach your studies it can't always stay the same. It has to evolve with you, just like the feedback to my students. Let's break it down into three levels. The first level of studying being ideal for a new artist with little to no experience and level three being ideal for a more experienced artists. You might already do this either knowingly or unknowingly, but in any case, it's always useful to know if you're doing it right or not. If you haven't been progressing much though, this might give you a few clues as to why that might be. Start studying the right way and you'll see right away how much of a difference it makes. When you study the right way, you don't have to study as much, yet you'll make more progress. Not bad, right? The cool thing is that this applies to anything that you want to study as an artist. Mm -hmm. Level one, learn to observe. When you start as an artist, it's a whole new world out there. Where do you begin? What do you focus on? If you've only just recently started, your biggest hurdle will be to observe properly. I made a video recently focusing on observation only, which I consider the most important art skill there is. So I definitely give that a watch next if you haven't. Very relevant here. Link in the top right corner of the screen right here or down in the description below. In a nutshell, the aim will be to go from just seeing things around you to actually observing things. As a new artist, chances are you're pretty bad at soaking up information and retaining it. That's what observation is all about. Observation is a skill like any other and skills start at zero. We've all been there. It's normal. The concrete steps would be to look at simple objects and try to draw them either from real life, things around you or from photo references. The key here is that you'll want to spend about half the time just observing your subject. Don't start drawing right away. Spend a good amount of time staring at your subject, trying to notice different things about it that you might have never really paid attention to before. Looking at its silhouette. How big is it relative to other nearby objects? What color is it? How that color changes when it goes from highlight to shadow? How shiny is it? How it fits in the environment? Can you see the top of it? Or are you too low? Can you see only the underside of it if it's maybe floating above you like it's something that's hanging? Take a good moment to get familiar with it. That step is super important. You'll be doing that a whole lot moving forward. Remember, 
It's the most important skill, in my opinion. Then, after you've gotten more familiar with the subject, try drawing it with a pencil, glancing back at it every time you hesitate. Focus on line art first, since that's the most important. You can try shading and coloring later once the line art part gets easy, but that's not nearly as important initially. Traditional or digital makes no difference. I think maybe it's just a little easier with a real pencil at first because of uh, fewer technical hurdles. Anyways, at first, keep it simple. Draw simple objects. Remember, initially we're not really practicing drawing as much as we are practicing to observe better. The drawing part will just help highlight what you should focus your observation on. Whatever you're struggling with the most, spend some extra time observing that some more. Don't worry about the time it takes you though. Your speed is just a reflection of your experience, so you should be pretty slow at first. That's normal. And that's level one. Seeing is for non-artists. Artists, observe. Start observing. Now, at level two, when you're able to draw simple objects, maybe some more complicated subjects like people using references, you'll want to introduce some art theory to the mix. The art fundamentals. This is what this level will focus on. And if you don't know what they are, I have a video on the subject right here in the top right corner of the screen or down below. Check it, bro. So I recommend that you learn a bit on all the various fundamentals. All the fundamentals are worth looking into at this point, but more specifically, the fundamental of construction. I'll get back to that in a minute. The main thing that will limit your observation skill is your knowledge of the subject. If you've never played a game like mm, League of Legends or StarCraft and you decide to watch a game on TV or on Twitch, you'll probably change the channel real quick because you won't understand anything that's happening. Your knowledge of the game will be limiting how much you can understand. Learn the rules though and it'll probably be a lot more interesting and you'll be able to extract more information from what's happening. And you might actually have a good time, be entertained. Do the same for your art. Learn the rules of the game, the fundamentals. So at level two, we'll be doing everything that we were doing at level one already, but introducing some art theory to help push our skills further. I was mentioning construction since that fundamental is all about deconstructing what you see, simplifying or abstracting the complex shapes of a subject into simple volumes that are easy to draw, like boxes, cylinders, spheres. Those are a lot easier to draw than a fully detailed human, and that's what you should always start your drawings with, instead of going right into the details. Practicing construction is also important since it acts almost as a filter for your observation skill. You can't observe everything, this is too much. So what do you focus on? What do you ignore when you look at references? Being good at construction means that you can look at something complex like a human body and see only the simple volumes that it's made out of. Being able to see those volumes, drawing them accordingly, and then slapping on the details is the way to go at level two. I have another video specifically on construction and I definitely recommend that you check that out too if you're still not sure what construction is all about. Once again, link in the top right corner here and down below. So level one was just to observe the reference and then draw what you see. At level two, we observe the reference, draw a simple construction for it, and then move on to details and you know everything else that you're able to observe. At level two, the references can also be other artists that you know are technically good, aka professionals. See how they construct their drawings. You might pick up a bunch of tricks. I wouldn't do that at level one though, not yet. Anyways, as you practice studying art at level two, start with line art first, and then feel free to explore, you know, adding shading, color, etc. But always put more emphasis on the line art if you want to level up faster. Trust me on that one. Maybe a topic for another video. Mm. Anyways, finally, level three. This is where most advanced artists will find themselves. You'll have a solid grasp on all the fundamentals and the main focus at this level will be to educate yourself or to become a specialist on whatever you prefer to draw. If it's characters, Study anatomy like a physical therapist might, looking at all the muscles, the bones, the proportions, differences between male and female, how things work in motion, when muscles are flexed or relaxed, etc. The more you know on the subject that you're trying to draw, the more you can observe and the better you'll get at drawing it. At level two, we would look at a reference, draw a block out or a construction for that subject, and then further add detail. 
at level 3. We'll instead start with the construction. We're flying on our own now. Still using references though. I recommend that you give your ref a quick glance, then get it out of your field of view and then try constructing what you saw as best as you can. If you ever have any hesitations, bring the reference back, get the information that you're missing, and then keep going without until you need it again. The reference now is now more of a crutch rather than the main source of information like it used to be at level 2. Once your construction is solid, move on to the details, just like at level 2, but challenge yourself again by relying less and less on the references. I don't mean that you should wing anything, but before you draw anything using a reference, try to do it from memory first. When you try not relying 100% on a reference and instead trust your memory, your visual library, trusting what you've learned so far, it helps make you even more receptive to relevant information. It makes you an even better information sponge. An art sponge, be an art sponge. At this level, it feels like you're working on a big puzzle and most pieces are in place already and you're just missing a few. Just like with a real puzzle, the pieces get easier and easier to place as you progress. With each level, the learning pace should increase if you do it well, if you adjust how you approach studying. I'm in a fortunate position where I get to interact with more artists than most, seeing how they develop and what works in their education versus what doesn't work. And what we saw today is the result of all those years of research and trial and error. That's how I teach now and it works awesome for the vast majority of students. Level 3 is how I study art nowadays and I've never improved as fast as I do now so I highly recommend that you give this a shot if you haven't already. Of course this goes for level 1 and 2 as well. So there it is. I think this is super relevant for artists of all levels and I hope it'll help if progress hasn't been up to the pace that you expect from yourself or if you're just starting and had no idea where to even begin. Hope it helps. Let me know if it does. If you have any questions, as usual, feel free to shoot them down in the comments below. I read everything all the time, even comments on older videos. Oh, and next week, I'll probably be posting my full unbiased review of the new Huion Canvas Pro 4K edition that they just sent me. And I also managed to negotiate a giveaway for three Canvas 16, um, the 2021 version, instead of just asking for cash because I love you. So don't miss it. If you want a shot at winning one, I'll give the details of the giveaway. Then lastly, I have a big discount going for my courses on a QBrush running until the end of the month only. Next one will be at Christmas. So don't miss it.